Welcome to Strip Coverlet, where we squeeze the bigger picture out of literature. I'm Adrian Ford, and we're here for a poetry discussion. Uh, my hair's, look at that, all over the place. Uh, what a surprise, what else is new? Uh, we have new videos on the channel Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Uh, Mondays are for poetry, but I also have new videos on my personal channel. What the fuck is going on up here? On my personal channel Monday, Wednesday, and Friday, um, Mondays there are not for poetry. Uh, but you can find a link to that channel in the description below. <clears throat> I will be presenting a poem by Charles Bukowski from You Get So Alone at Times That It Just Makes Sense. Son of a bitch. Son of a bitch. Anyway, the poem in question is called Rift, and it reads as such. I can't live with you anymore, she said. Look at you. Huh? I asked. Look at you, sitting in that goddamn chair. Your belly is sticking out of your underwear. You've burnt cigarette holes into all of your shirts. All you do is suck on that goddamn beer bottle after bottle. What do you get out of that? The damage has been done, I told her. What are you talking about? Nothing matters. And we know nothing matters. And that matters. You're drunk. Come on, baby, let's get along. It's easy. Not for me, she screamed. Not for me. She ran into the bathroom to put on her makeup. I got up for another beer. I sat back down, just had the new bottle in my mouth when she came out of the bathroom. Holy shit, she screamed. You're disgusting. I laughed right into the bottle, gagged. Spit a mouthful of beer across my undershirt. My God, she said. She slammed the door and was gone. I looked at the closed door and at the doorknob, and strangely, I didn't feel alone. This poem is a pretty good representation of what I mean when I say I'm a nihilist. It's a pretty good representation of what I mean when I talk about my views on the meaning of life and atheism. It may sound strange. I know. I understand. It may sound sad, perhaps. I know. I understand. It may sound stupid and short-sighted. I'm there with you. But here's the thing. What's the meaning of life? Nihilists say there is no meaning of life. Atheists See, there's no constructed, there's no prefabricated meaning of life. The beauty in both of these assumptions is that any type of meaning that we can derive from life is meaning which we decide to derive from life. It's not for everyone. Um, it is not surely, certainly, for the woman in this poem, <clears throat> Baby, as she is called, Baby seems to at once reject, as well as fall subject to, societal expectations. She seems to reject them in that she is here with Bukowski, with the speaker, with Chanasky, at the beginning of the poem. She's there. But in this epiphany, this sudden epiphany, she sees Chanasky. Bukowski, speaker, poet, is disgusting. Well, prior to her epiphany, Janaski had been the same person. After her epiphany, Janaski remained the same person. Nothing matters. We know nothing matters, and that matters. That matters. It matters that we know nothing matters because in the lack of absolute meaning, we are free to construct our own meaning. I'm going to read it one more time. Rift. <clears throat> I can't live with you anymore, she said. Look at you. Huh? I asked. Look at you. Sitting in that goddamn chair. Your belly is sticking out of your underwear. You've burnt cigarette holes in all your shirts. All you do is suck on that goddamn beer, bottle after bottle. 
What do you get out of that? The damage has been done, I told her. What are you talking about? Nothing matters. We know nothing matters. And that matters. You're drunk. Come on, baby. Let's get along. It's easy. Not for me, she screamed. Not for me. She ran into the bathroom to put on her makeup. I got up for another beer. I sat back down and just had the new bottle in my mouth when she came out of the bathroom. Holy shit, she screamed. You're disgusting. I laughed right into the bottle, gagged, spit a mouthful of beer across my undershirt. My God, she said. She slammed the door and was gone. I looked at the door, I looked at the closed door and at the doorknob, and strangely, I didn't feel alone. So after her epiphany, Baby, and it's probably pretty fitting that she is called Baby, because babies form their reality to the society in which they're growing up, right? Um, babies are tabula rasa, and we put all this stuff in there, to an extent I think they're tabula rasa, as far as uh, culture is concerned, and we pour this on there, we pour that on there, and uh, they learn a little bit by little bit. And one of the things that baby has picked up is I've got to put my face on for society to accept me. Well, Bukowski in this poem, uh, belly jutting out from his underwear, sipping on beer, cigarette holes and all of his shirts, doesn't seem to care. Doesn't seem to give a good goddamn about that. He doesn't care. He doesn't care if society is going to accept him or not. He's going to be him. He's found his meaning. His meaning is in his writing as he's sitting at that table. We know what Janaski is doing at that table, regardless of whether or not it is uh, explicated in this poem. Janaski is sitting there writing. Always writing. And he's got meaning in his beer. However, Baby comes out with her face on, and she says, holy shit. My God. She's going back to classic meaning. She's going back to religion. Back to God and rules and holy and all this. And in such, she's going back to external judgment. Judgment coming in. She's going back to values that she does not set. Bukowski, on the other hand, is left. She leaves, kadunk, slams the door and everything. I looked at the door. I looked at the, I did it again. Same, same reading error. Rito, like a typo, it's a Rito. The same type, the, I looked at the closed door and at the doorknob. And strangely, I didn't feel alone. He, Bukowski, Chinaski, poet, speaker, writer, doesn't even need the acceptance of the people around whom, or the people with whom he surrounds himself. Uh, this being, we're presuming, his place, he's asked her in, he doesn't even need her acceptance. Why? Well, he's Chinaski. He has his values. His values are writing. His values are beer. His, right, his values are those meanings, those values that he himself has constructed. What is the meaning of life? The meaning of life is there is no meaning of life. The first rule of Fight Club is don't talk about Fight Club. The meaning of life is that we decide the meaning of life. We come up with what it is that we think life should mean. Now, that seems like it might be willy-nilly. That seems it might be pretty open-ended. There's no wrong answer. And there's not. Until there is. It's very easy in a world where you are constructing meaning for yourself. It's very easy to build a castle out of sand. 
And once that wave comes in, that castle is not for long. So in the original, um, let me see if I can, am I still connected to the internet? Let me see. Yeah, uh, we're going to see if we, we're going to see if we can find this quote now that I'm talking about it. Um, when we construct our own meanings in life, and those meanings are free to be whatever we want them to, the old hip hop phrase "It's all on a bitch now" is very true. Because if you pick wrong, it's on you. And you might not know it until you're 40. And you might not know it until you're 50. And you might not know it until you're on your deathbed. Guess what? Tough titties. Uh, Bukowski here. Now, what? I can't find the quote. Um... Bukowski here has set his own meaning. Baby is getting ready to relapse to traditional. I almost type traditional. Um, baby's getting ready to relapse to traditional means of meaning, to traditional. Um, Getting the same. Strike out left, strike out right. You know, a uh, uh, hundred times on the channel I've, I've given this quote. But um, baby is getting ready to relapse into traditional forms of meaning. And that's dangerous too. <coughs> Pardon me. So imagine yourself finding God. Okay, and I'm not picking on anybody. I'm not picking on any religion. Just imagine yourself finding God, coming to religion, and then you realize years into the process. I mean, you're deep, baby. You're in there. Deep into that process, you um, can't find it within yourself to believe. Mother Teresa went through this um, said I, I even when I'm alone as hard as I try I, I can't I can't feel anything um, don't have it can't feel it she was told by I believe it was the Pope at the time that's a good thing it means you're going through uh, a struggle I can't find this goddamn quote guys anywhere This article is titled Strike Out Right and Left. It is literally titled from that quote, and it doesn't have... Can I search this thing? How do I do this? Um, I'm learning on the fly. I'm trying, anyway. I'm growing. I'm trying to grow. Uh, okay. Anyway, doesn't matter. Imagine you have reverted to classic um, wells of meaning religion, family, these things, any of it, any of it, anything you uh, in, in America, money. Imagine building your life around money and realizing at 45, you're not really good at making money. Everything crumbles. Now, the safety net to these traditional wells of meaning is that, well, I was just going with the flow, guys. You can't blame me for valuing what everyone else values, right? If you don't find success in these wells of meaning, you don't find success in these wells of meaning, at least you are on the right track or you can feel that way. When building one's own well of meaning, you don't get that little bit of comfort. If you find success, much more successful. However, if you do not, and the odds are much higher when you construct your own well of meaning, the odds are much higher when you construct your own well of meaning that you will not find success. And when you do not, 
the plummet downhill is so much steeper. So with these things in mind, let's read the poem one more time. Rift. I can't live with you anymore, she said. Look at you. Huh? I asked. Look at you. Sitting in that goddamn chair. Your belly is sticking out of your underwear. You've burnt cigarette holes in all your shirts. All you do is suck on that goddamn beer. Bottle after bottle. What do you get out of that? The damage has been done, I told her. What are you talking about? Nothing matters. We know nothing matters. And that matters. You're drunk. Come on, baby. Let's get along. It's easy. Not for me, she screamed. Not for me. She ran into the bathroom to put on her makeup. I got up for another beer. I sat back down, just had the new bottle into my mouth, when she came out of the bathroom. Holy shit, she screamed. You're disgusting. I laughed right into the bottle, gagged, spit a mouthful of beer across my undershirt. My God, she said. She slammed the door and was gone. I looked at the closed door and at the doorknob and, strangely, I didn't feel alone. That is all I have for this nihilistic poetry discussion. For this atheistic poetry discussion. Uh, I have new videos on the channel Monday, Wednesday, and Friday. Mondays are for poetry. Uh, I also have a personal channel, a link to which can be found in the description below. And I hope to see you on the next video.